Hey everybody, great to see you all this afternoon. I hope everybody's week is off to an amazing start. My name is Laura Bolio and I'm the VP of Marketing here at Holistic Lynn. I'm here with Emily. Emily, welcome back. It's great to have you again. And great. to our audience, if this is your if this is your first time joining us, welcome. We're absolutely thrilled to have you here. And if you're coming back for more, welcome back. You know you're in for a good, good time and lots of learning. So as all as always, our number one goal is to deliver the most maximum value content to you to bring to your practice, to, to bring your practice to the next level so that you can deliver even more value to your clients. So today, Emily is going to be talking about the tax time bomb, why ignoring year-round tax planning is costing your clients thousands. And you might remember Emily as the breakout star from our tax planning summit that we hosted in April. And her last webinar was on maximizing impact and talking to your prospects and clients about tax planning. And there has been so much demand for Emily that we have now a recurring webinar series with Emily, which we're thrilled about. So Emily is a Investopedia top 100 advisor, and she's a partner and senior financial planner at Archer Investment Management. So before we jump into it, yes, 100%, we got you covered. This webinar will be recorded. Any questions you have, please feel free to drop them into the Q&A. And as far as the slides go, we'll send the slides out with the recording in about a day or so. So please feel free to engage. We love Q&A. Emily, with that, I would love to hand it off to you. Yeah, thanks, Laura. Thanks for having me back. I'm really excited to be here today. And the topics that I presented on before, so the recordings that are out there, the most recent one was talking about how to talk to your prospective clients, how to talk to your existing clients about tax planning and the value that you can provide with it. And the one before that, so back in July, um, was really about setting up some workflows and processes. So there's a little bit that I'll build on those two presentations. So I invite you to go find those recordings in with a holistic plan um, and check them out. So today's topic is the tax time bomb. Um, so why ignoring year-round tax planning is costing your clients thousands. And in a lot of cases, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes and future healthcare premiums and all of that as well. So we're going to talk about year-round tax planning specifically because uh, we were just in our firm. Um, so in our practice, we were looking at kind of the meeting schedule sequence across our clients. And somebody had said, hey, should we maybe not have so many client meetings in April or March because of the tax planning? And I said, no, we got to think about it the other way around because the opportunity is typically year round, but a lot of that is centered in the fall. So we're kind of just jumping into right now, I think an even bigger tax season right now because of all of the opportunities that you can find between now and year end that make a massive impact on our clients and on the relationship. So quick little bit about me, um, been a financial planner for 18 years now. I'm a partner at an RIA out of Austin, Texas, Archer Investment Management. Um, and so we work with almost, we're getting so close, 300 million assets under management, but 220 households. Uh, there's two, of, two advisors and we have six people supporting us. Um, so skipping tax planning will blow up your relationship, um, potentially. So there are many studies that talk about why tax planning is so important. So Kitsis study recently, um, talked about increasing client satisfaction and deepening client relationships. Cerulea Associates said that 90% of high net worth clients expect tax planning, very similar study by Spectrum that talked about how 92% of clients expect tax planning, but only 25% receive it. And wealth management report, this one is, is kind of the most killer, is 72% of clients who switched advisors cited poor tax planning or the lack of tax-related advice as a reason for moving to another firm. Um, and I can confirm too that as we have intake forms of prospective clients who are, who are wanting a potential introductory meeting, we ask them to select the topics that are most important to them. And an overwhelming number of people, I think 85% of people check tax planning as one of their top concerns and when they are seeking a new financial planning advisor relationship. 
So if you are skipping all of this, there's a chance of potentially losing your clients and not meeting expectations. So maybe not having that deep level of relationship and client satisfaction that you could potentially have. And tax planning is getting easier and easier and easier by the day. As we have different tech tools and resources, um, workflows and prepared letters that you can send to clients, all of these things are making it so much easier to have a tax planning relationship with every single one of your clients, or at least the top section of your clients that you work with. So you might know why it's important to do year-round tax planning, but I'll share a little bit more about that. So many strategies need to happen prior to 1231. As I was preparing my slides, I, I really segregated out what can you actually do between January 1st and April 15th, it, it's very limited what you can do after the year has closed. A lot of the opportunity really is prior to year end, um, adding massive lifelong impact and also gaining a long-term fan. So if you can demonstrate that you can save your clients thousands, maybe tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on taxes in your relationship, you're going to have less conversations defending your investment performance against, against the S&P 500 this year or um, talking about fees. It's really talking about that value that you can provide to your clients um, and being that partner for them for the long haul to help them implement all of these tax planning strategies over a long period of time. So we're going to get into some of those. Um, but really, when you have planned well with your clients, there's future opportunities like gain harvesting or low health care costs in the future, lower lifetime total taxes. And when you are executing on these strategies, they need you. They are trickier to execute. These are not things clients know how to do. So if you've ever had to write an email to a client and explain to them on their own to go execute their own even backdoor Roth IRA contribution or Roth conversion or contributing appreciated shares to a donor advised fund. When you start to explain these things, if you actually go to write it out and, and tell somebody to go do it and give them the instructions, these things are complicated and they're easy to make a mistake on. Um, so especially if somebody is trying to maybe learn and execute on their own, we have clients who have come to us that may be even well-read and understand that these strategies exist, but don't have the team behind them to help execute that. So if you have on your team, if there's multiple people on your team, being able to have somebody who's going to execute all of the paperwork to handle the actual tax strategies that you've determined and to map them out in the different tax softwares, um, clients can't do that on their own. And so I've had people come to me who have maybe blindly tried to do a little bit of this, but the, the level of insight we're able to see ahead and see around those corners and be able to help them see the big picture and execute on that is huge. Um, so I want you to kind of imagine with me if somebody has moved through their whole life with no tax planning. So they've never thought about tax planning before. Now they're in retirement. So let's say they're 70 years old. So if they're your client now and they're in their 70s, when you go to place trades for them, now we're worried about capital gains taxes, right? So they've got all these appreciated investments potentially, or you've got a, um, you know, a whole bunch of money in pre-tax IRAs and they want to take money out. Now they're worried about taxes every time they move. So they're kind of boxed into this tax trap of thinking, hey, maybe I want to buy a new car, but if I pay cash and I take money out of my portfolio, now you've got to trade me out of investments. Now you've got to take money maybe out of a pre-tax IRA or trigger taxes. There's all of these trip wires. And so proactive tax planning allows you to potentially maybe think ahead of that. And it's also a nightmare to think about if they've got all of this money in a pre-tax IRA. So you've helped them shove a bunch of money into IRAs and 401ks and you've built up this pre-tax bucket. Then they're also leaving that money to their kids that might be at their peak earning years in high tax brackets and potentially forced to draw down that investment um, during a time period where they maybe don't want to. 
So taking a look at that kind of overall strategy without tax planning, there is an insane amount of taxes they're going to be paying potentially in the future or their kids might be or their beneficiaries might be. So now dream with me. So let's say you've been meeting with your client every fall. You get your pumpkin spice latte and get your boots and your scarf on and you sit down with all of their data. And every single fall, you sit down and maybe top up some tax brackets, help them maybe get some Roth conversions done, load up those HSAs, donate some of their appreciated stock to donor advised fund. So you are just looking at these little micro opportunities each year with them all the way through the relationship. So sometimes it's a game of inches. You are finding a few dollars here and a few dollars here and a few dollars here that compound over a number of years. So now imagine you have a client in their 70s and they've got big old buckets of Roth money. They've got a big HSA. They've got a donor advised fund. And you have a great relationship with the CPA because you've been communicating with them. So now anytime they want to take money out for whatever reason, it doesn't feel like this big tax tripwire. We're not worried about triggering all these taxes for them in retirement. So you've likely, if you've been around for a little while, you've likely had conversations with clients who are in that position. They're in retirement and they're limiting their spending and they're limiting their distributions because they don't want to trigger taxes. So they're, they're, you're giving clients this opportunity to over a long period of time, potentially create that type of scenario where they can freely take money out and give. You can potentially freely trade their portfolios without worrying about capital gains quite so much. And their kids are gonna potentially inherit after-tax money. So how does that feel? So that feels you are going to help your clients feel cared for in a way where you are looking out for them in the future and you are looking out for their beneficiaries' inheritances. So you're thinking ahead for them and providing this massive amount of value that they are likely unable to handle on their own. So how do we identify those tax trip wires? I'm going to take you into a few of the reports that we use in our practice from Holista Plan. Um, allow us to very clearly identify and see where those trip wires are. So where those brackets are for just some of that micro strategy each and every year that can compound. So the very first thing that we do um, is we upload a client's tax return into Holista Plan and we run the tax report. Um, so tax report, uh, if you have not seen it yet, got a refresh. So we have tax report 2.0. Um, Holistic Plan recently did a deep dive webinar all about Tax Report 2.0. So if this is new to you, if I'm going to start showing you some newer screens that you've not seen before, you might be living in 1.0. Um, if you head over to 2.0 of the Tax Report, um, you'll be able to see some of the additional charts and uh, metrics that you'll be able to see. So when you upload that tax re re return into Holista Plan, it'll cleanly extract a lot of that data into reports so we can very quickly see um, their adjusted gross income, uh, standard deduction or itemized. We can see their what, their, what they've owed in taxes, their current bracket and average rate. Uh, we can take a look at any loss carry forwards. Um, so a lot of information that we can potentially see and this is where I'm talking about these tax trip wires. So potentially tripping into a new tax bracket, or we're gonna talk in, in a minute about healthcare, um, but being able to very clearly see how much income is falling into the different ordinary income tax thresholds. Um, so especially, um, I don't know if anyone can tell me why the IRS has chosen 10%, 12, and then all the way up to the 22% bracket. It's such a big jump, little jump, big jump, little jump, little jump. Um, so we can kind of see and show a client where they are in the brackets and, and help them understand where their income falls in from a bracketing perspective. Um, this is a new chart on 2.0 version that allows us to see how far we have maybe to go inside of a 12% bracket. So if you were to run this client out in a long-term scenario, 
if you were to potentially look at them on a long-term basis, you might be able to see, hey, their income is really low this year relative to what they'll earn in their lifetime. And maybe it's because they're taking a sabbatical this year or they're skilling up. Maybe they're, they were a tech worker and they're skilling up to maybe pivot into AI or some other area. Um, so maybe they have a really low income this year and to be potentially be able to look at this opportunity of topping up a 12% tax bracket and paying 12% on income here. Um, typically that's going to be through Roth conversion or if somebody might have some control about kind of the timing of when their income comes in, maybe if they're self-employed, um, taking a look at where they are in the brackets and filling those up. I would much rather see a client pay 12% in taxes now than in a long range view, potentially having some income in these higher brackets later, which again, could be even higher after the end of 2025. So being able to identify that, um, also being able to identify capital gains brackets. So here's an opportunity immediately when I jumped into this demo where I thought, man, if they have, so let's say they are that tech worker, and maybe they had a whole bunch of RSUs they received all throughout the years prior. And they've got this stock at with a lot of capital gains baked into it. So really low basis, high value now. You might be able to look at their scenario here and say, let's potentially top up this 0% capital gains bracket and do some gain harvesting. So I know many of you potentially look at opportunity for loss harvesting to potentially maybe lower or offset some gains that have occurred or to bank some losses for the future. Um, but this is kind of an unappreciated kind of area of, of tax planning that we have the opportunity to do. So if somebody is maybe has a lower income year and they fall down into that 0% ca long-term capital gains bracket, or if they're maybe in that early retirement time frame where you can kind of help dial in where their income sources are and maybe live off of some Roth money or some other types of assets that maybe don't trigger taxes, um, then you have these opportunities to maybe get rid of a whole bunch of this appreciated stock as well to be able to then use it um, in some of those future tax years as well. So um, understanding where you fall here, um, this is an entire workflow step in our process now is to identify this, especially if somebody's going through they're during their career and they're in a job change or a sabbatical, or especially if they're in that early retirement valley before they have to start RMDs, um, this is an opportunity to look out for as well and to very quickly understand and identify where they might fall here. Um, so this is, when I think about tripwires, I immediately think about healthcare costs. So there's kind of two pieces of it. So if somebody is going to retire early, so before age 65, um, going out and shopping for healthcare, uh, a lot of the different programs, especially on the exchange, are income based. And so, if during somebody's career, they are potentially maybe topping up brackets a little bit along the way, um, they're converting some money over to Roth or making Roth contributions, and they're building some of that money up, or they have taxable assets that you've been gain harvesting against, or have the ability to potentially make some decisions about drawing down, or you've saved up some cash for them to draw down, um, you can potentially influence how much they're going to pay for healthcare. It's not based on their asset level. It's based on their income. So I will never forget a client that we had in Virginia, the decent net worth. He had $7 million in his investment accounts. He was paying 22 cents per month for his healthcare because with planning, we were kind of determining where he was going to kind of draw his income down from um, and keep his income right at the threshold level there. Um, so on the holistic plan report here, specifically, this is something that impacts a lot more people, which is the Medicare IRMA brackets. So these are the thresholds where the same old healthcare that everybody gets, Part B uh, and Part D premiums, go up if your income is increased as well. So this is for 2024. So the thresholds here, this is for married filing jointly. So in this is a cliff. So if you earn a dollar more than 206,000, then you're gonna start paying another $70 a month per person for the same old Medicare Part B that everybody else is receiving. 
So if you can kind of keep your income in this level here, you're going to pay the standard Part B premium, which goes up a little bit every year. Same thing with Part D, no excess premium here, no IRMA surcharge. Um, but if you are a dollar over, so this isn't graduated, it's a dollar over, you're going to then fall into this next bracket and pay more for your health care. But then look how painful this gets. If you have a really big tax year, especially over age 65 and on Medicare, you're going to be paying a lot more per person for your health care. So this same couple is paying $1,200 a month for health care that another couple is paying a couple, few hundred dollars a month for. Um, so no additional kind of change there. So this is something that we have the ability, especially for younger clients, to potentially influence us a little bit better and maybe try to fill up some of these brackets, especially earlier on in their lives or even in that early retirement time before we get into age 65 to potentially try to get those brackets topped up um, for Medicare. So then you're going to look at some of these different thresholds here. Or if you know that you've already tripped over one, maybe we avoid the next one and top that bracket up. So if the income here is 207000 then we're already going to pay this amount right in two years because um, it's a two-year look back. So might as well maybe top up the rest of that bracket. Um, so it might be strategically thinking about um, we're in the bracket already. If we keep topping up to that maybe 258 in this scenario and we do that for a few years, then potentially it's going to save some bigger premiums in the future as well. So looking forward, this is something that um, is something to educate your clients on early on. So I just had a conversation about Medicare Irma with a 34-year-old client because looking at the contribution strategy into retirement accounts, looking at some of the longer term strategy, it's really helping to educate him on, hey, a little bit of pain now sometimes is worth avoiding this potential pain later in cost, um, but also just how you feel in retirement, knowing that every time you wanna go and grab money out of an IRA, um, pre-tax IRA or 401k, that you might run into this kind of issue and you have to kind of pay attention and track it a little bit more closely in retirement. So being able to educate your clients on that is huge. Um, and then there's some additional kind of tripwires to pay attention to. Um, what is listed on this report, so if any clients are under certain thresholds, understanding all of the different education opportunity um, credits, clean vehicle credits, um, all of those different student loan interest deductions, you're able to really quickly see what's being counted for that MAGI definition and where are they kind of in that bracket. So you can really quickly see what opportunities might potentially lie here um, and even where you might be related to that phase out. Um, if you feel like any of this feels complex, check it out. We've got some observations at the bottom. Um, so you'd be able to potentially see some of those opportunities um, but just by downloading the report and seeing that potential 0% capital gains rate opportunity, maybe there's some room for Roth conversion. So there are some explainers in here as well that help you to understand what some of those opportunities are going to be. So we use this report in every single client meeting. Um, and then in the fall, so what we're essentially doing as well is helping our clients understand what the current year looks like. So some of tax planning is preparing for these potential huge future taxes and healthcare premiums and Medicare premiums, um, but also making sure that, that there aren't any surprises. So we've had plenty of clients who have equity compensation, um, who don't realize that they're potentially tripping into um, some additional tax brackets or have, they're going to owe a lot more than maybe they expected to. So that's also something that you can help diffuse a little bit more in the fall. Um, so especially if you think about some of these clients that have some of these tech stocks and they're receiving these big equity grants and, and RSUs are vesting quarterly, for example, and potentially they're pushed up into these really high tax brackets, but they're only withholding 22% against those on the supplemental standard withholding rate when they're getting those. So you've got sometimes these client scenarios and, and situations where all of a sudden there's a huge surprise tax bill. So maybe your client has sold an investment property. Um, maybe they have this surprise income or bigger bonuses, 
or maybe just how they've had their withholdings. Um, for a lot of people, they just assume that, hey, if I get married and now we're on joint filing, uh, all of a sudden we're not going to owe as much in taxes, but really they're not really realizing how their income might stack together um, and how maybe together how much they're withholding on their paychecks might not be enough. So what we do in scenario analysis in the fall is we want to potentially understand um, how much the client might owe for that year and what and how to potentially optimize that a little bit further. So when we upload the tax return into Holistic Plan, we automatically get their scenario analysis. So the, the base scenario is already created. So it's all extracted out um, from the tax return and listed here so we can see from that particular year what their wages and what their withholdings were. IRA distributions, anything that they potentially did. And it allows us to play with a scenario to say, let's copy over the prior year. So from the tax return, it's already built. Let's copy that over and now let's play with it. So if we're going to potentially do a Roth conversion in a scenario, we can plug in a hypothetical Roth conversion for that client. Um, we've got a really nice explainer in here that will explain some additional details about why and what the long-term impact might look like. We plug that in and we can understand what kind of tax bracket are we going to be in um, and what might they owe at the end of the year, April 15th, or what might they get for a refund. And so you can optimize a little bit for trying to find out where the top of that bracket is or if they are potentially going to be receiving a refund, maybe eating into that refund a little bit um, and doing a conversion or helping them at this point. So right now we're in September, um, potentially through the end of the year, some additional paycheck withholding to help or estimated quarterly taxes to help offset some of the taxes that might be owed. So another tripwire that uh, Holistic Plan will calculate for you is the underpayment penalties. So they're usually, you know, usually if clients go over a little bit, it's not severe, but it, it's nice to be able to help a client avoid a few hundred dollars, maybe even a few thousand dollars of underpayment penalties by not withholding enough throughout that year. Um, so I want to share a little bit more about our process and kind of where those, those fit in here. So when we're thinking about um, in the fall, kind of getting ready when we're preparing for these meetings, what are we what are we doing internally? So what is my firm doing? Um, so we take a look at all of our clients that we provide tax planning for, which is most of our clients. Um, the only ones that we don't do this tax planning for are really, we have some investment only clients or smaller clients that really aren't full planning clients. But most of the clients in our firm are full planning clients. And we do this tax planning for every single one, every single year. We take a look at our client list we see if they've uploaded their return already or if we need to request it. Um, we're looking at potentially, is their CPA maybe handling projections or is that something that we're going to be doing on Holista Plan? And when is their tax planning meeting date and any potential relevant notes? So really the first stage to get ready for the fall is to just get organized. Um, some of our clients are pretty well trained in just uploading their tax returns or we have authorization from their CPA and we get it securely from them. So we work on getting all of the data that we potentially need. And then we ask for the other data. So this is something I'll share in the follow-up, which is um, our data request template. So asking them for the return if they haven't given it to us already, um, looking for most recent pay stubs, um, other income statements, deductions, credits, retirement contributions, um, other key kind of information that we might want to know. So we have that template built. We use Pulse 360 to send this out, but it makes it a lot easier if we just quickly push that out. So we check, do they have the return? What other data do we have? We send out a data request. And then we are, if you don't know this about me already, we are crazy about our workflows. So this is our tax planning deep dive workflow, which I'll share. We have 30 steps to kind of walk through and look at um, do we have the return? Have we run their tax report or have we drafted out their scenario analysis? We walk through this process with each client. And one thing I talked about as well um, in previous webinars is about delegating if you can. So if you work on a team with folks who have 
administrative type roles that can help with sending out that letter template, requesting the tax return, requesting the other data, getting things loaded already into Holista plan. Um, so creating that supportive process that when I jump in is really when we're starting to look at strategy. So um, I spend my time a little bit more on once all that data is in and ready, we've already maybe identified some of those tripwires and some things that I've pre-programmed to look for specifically, then I go into a kind of analysis mode from there. So I take a look at all of those reports. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about what some of those opportunities are. I've already mentioned some of them. Um, so in the spring, you have some opportunity, of course. So you can still make some IRA contributions, SEP, solo 401k contributions, HSA you can top up. Um, but more specifically, as you may know, HSA contributions out of payroll avoid payroll taxes as well. You make a contribution directly to the HSA, you're avoiding federal and state, but not FICA. So HSA contributions, yes, you can top them up in the spring and fully load them, but ideally doing planning in the fall and getting those contributions made via payroll are gonna be an opportunity. So we've got that on our checklist to kind of look at. Um, organizing data for the CPA. So that's another thing that very often in the spring, um, we're helping to stage that process um, in the fall meeting. Um, so I'll show you that a little bit as well. Um, as we go through our fall meeting with our clients and we're looking at the tax report, we're looking at the scenario analysis, we're getting all of that ready. We are then, we have all that data in front of us. So if we're doing that analysis at this point, we're looking at all of that data about the client. This is a really good time to get your tax letter staged. So inside of Lista Plan, you can start to build out that tax letter and list out. Yep, I've got the W-2s, I've got income, or not W-2s at this point. Uh, if you have year-to-date uh, pay uh, statements, then you know what their income sources are already so that you know to expect a W-2, you know to expect 1099s, um, you know what to be able to tell the CPA what to potentially expect to receive. So you can help your clients become more organized and ready for the spring tax planning season. So you can get a lot of this staged out while you've got the data all in front of you about tax documents that you'd expect to potentially receive, um, contributions that have either been made or that you expect to potentially make, um, charitable like QCDs, charitable distributions from IRAs, if they did a 60 day rollover. I just had one of these last week. So I had a client do a 60 day rollover and we asked our custodian about coding. And they said, we don't code it here. We've got, you've got to just tell the CPA that that's what happened. So same thing with QCDs, it's not as obvious right now. Um, so there are certain things that you really need to tell that CPA and a year is a long time. So if you have a client that has a 60 day rollover or even just a rollover 401k to IRA, um, a QCD early in the year, they might have forgotten about it or they might assume that the CPA already knows about that. So being able to, anytime you help a client process something that might not be obvious um, to potentially just stage that into the tax letter, you can pop in, add a note here into the tax letter and it's ready to go. Our process internally is that each spring, part of our spring tax planning is to finalize that tax letter and get it out to the CPA with anything we have access to. So 1099 information, um, additional notes, I'll still put it in the email to them. Yes, we did a Roth conversion or yes, the client confirmed they paid estimated quarterlies. There any information that I might know that's important for them to have. Um, but we're then potentially listing out information, cost basis information. Um, so potentially, especially if you have tech clients that a lot of their 1099s come out with zero cost basis for all their sales, um, potentially being able to share some additional information that will come also with the supplemental data. So there's a lot of information that can be shared on this tax letter. So that's part of the process that I consider a spring opportunity, but in the summer, in the fall, all year round as you're moving through your different opportunities, continuing to keep that data organized for CPAs and getting the tax letter ready to go um, for this time frame is, is also important. So getting your clients prepared for that.
So I've got several slides on, on fall opportunities. So of course, different types of payroll contributions. So if you, uh, anybody is not self-employed, they typically need to make all of their payroll contributions to their 401ks. Um, so especially if they just kind of had of a repeating contribution amount coming out of their payroll and they don't change it year by year, um, potentially making sure that you're going to calculate how much they're going to put in by the end of the year, make sure they get that maxed out if that's the goal. Um, and by then, sometimes you already have the data about what to expect for the next year. So some of the tax planning meetings that we do a little bit deeper into the fall, we already know what maybe the 2025 uh, contribution limits are going to be so we can educate our clients on that in the meeting if we're doing it after that point. Um, otherwise, we just follow up with an email with those limits. Um, payroll contributions to HSAs, I've mentioned that. 529 plan contributions if you live in a state or your clients live in a state where they have a state tax deduction for it. Um, fall opportunities, so Roth conversion. So this is when you're looking at those brackets. So you're taking a look at those brackets and seeing maybe what can you top up um, by income smoothing or um, Roth conversions potentially is one strategy for that. Making sure that your clients don't have any surprises on April 15th. So I would much rather have my clients understand their expected refund or what they might owe. I'd rather have them kind of have an estimate of that in September, October, November, than have to kind of scramble in March. Um, it, you may have received those panicked emails or phone calls from clients that maybe had a big surprise. Um, it is not fun. So if we can prepare our clients for that better, we've got tools to do that pretty easily now. We can help adjust withholding. So there's opportunity. So as you may know, so you can go on and make estimated quarterly tax payments, but if you owe a lot in the year, you can't just make all of your estimated quarterlies right at the end of the year. Um, or before January 15th, there's still potentially an underpayment penalty because you haven't paid them throughout the years for, spaced out. Um, but that's not the case for IRA distributions or payroll withholdings. Um, the IRS doesn't really care about the timing of those. So you can bump up withholdings coming out of paychecks or IRA distributions to potentially um, make that April 15th experience not so painful. Um, other fall opportunities, of course, so charitable contributions, so maybe some bun uh, bunching some deductions and putting some money into donor advised funds. If they're 70 and a half or older, looking at qualified charitable distributions, maybe making annual exclusion gifts, so giving some gifts to family or other people. Um, and then this is a good opportunity to say, yep, you had RMDs, we satisfied those for you. Um, and I always like to show our work. So even things that maybe are already done, your tax planning meeting is an opportunity for you to talk about things that you've already helped them do. Yes, we did loss harvesting earlier this year or gain harvesting. Um, we helped you take your RMDs this year. That's already been taken care of. That's satisfied. So I bring this up because it's important that sometimes we don't, our clients don't realize how much work we potentially do just to keep them running throughout the year. So making sure that you think about ahead of time, maybe I'll share some wins from earlier in the year or remind them of the work that I've done or remind them of the importance of this work or what we're potentially trying to avoid in the future with some future taxes. Um, so looking ahead. So as I mentioned, communicate next year's limits, looking at milestone year next year. So that's in our, our workflow as well. So are they turning 50? Are they turning 55? Are they turning 59 and a half? Are they turning 70 and a half? Are they turning an RMD age, you know, 73 to 75? So where are they right now from milestone year perspective? Um, and what potential opportunities in the fall that we could potentially think about for the next year? So you can potentially even look another year ahead at potential Roth conversion opportunities. So if you know ahead roughly what you're thinking for a Roth conversion, and you know that number in January, and the market takes a big dive at some point earlier in the year, you might be able to get your conversions done early. So that's also why I don't want to leave the entire Roth conversion conversation to the fall, because if we saw the market fall apart in May, I might want to kind of quickly do a bunch of conversions during that time frame. Or there's other strategies that maybe we want to look at from a distribution perspective. So if your clients are potentially, you're helping them with some of those deaccumulation strategies of where to pull money from when to kind of top up certain brackets. So if they're in distribution mode, you want to maybe have that rethought out ahead of the start of the year so you can figure out 
yep, this might be a good time to sell a certain investment or rebalance or gain or loss harvest or pull income out. So it's just potentially an opportunity in the fall to look at what can we do this year, but what can we look forward and look ahead at potentially doing? So thinking about that as part of your meeting flow as well. Um, so I'm going to go over one more slide and then I'll jump into some questions. I think we've got a bunch of, of questions we can jump into. Um, so the process really is to create, how can you create some systems? So I shared with you just a little bit of an Excel snippet of just organizing our data. So what are we going to offer? What data do we need? Who do we have that from? When are we going to do these meetings? I like to space them out between September, October, November, typically. Um, so that's my preference. You might decide to surge that a little bit further and kind of crunch those down further, um, but it's maybe spending a little bit of the time right now preparing for that surge time. Figure out if you can or what you can potentially delegate um, and leveraging technology. So the, the tools for us to be able to look at their current year scenario copying that information right over from the tax return and then just updating a few different values. Um, that's a, a, a really easy way to look at it. So you don't have to go and, and mock prepare an entire return for them. You're really just extracting some data and doing some quick updates to the data that is in there for the current year. Um, think about potentially how to set yourself up um, with different workflows, which I'll share. Um, processes, steps, templates. So I'm big on that. That's the only way you can uh, kind of exercise in mass, like a, a big tax planning strategy across a firm potentially. Um, use this as a way to communicate your value constantly. Um, because again, if you are saving your clients thousands, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of dollars in future taxes, then that's a huge, massive value add that you're going to be providing to that client. Um, and make sure you keep telling them that. So even if you do your tax plan and yep, you're going to do um, this charitable contribution strategy a little bit every year or Roth conversions, or you're going to switch the contributions, um, you might think that you're setting a strategy and then just letting it run, but make sure you remind the clients what you're doing and why each year. Remind them of why, because especially if you're asking them potentially in certain years to pay a little bit more in taxes now to save massive taxes later or you're even just on a shorter term, like bunching some deductions between one year and you're kind of looking out a couple of years, um, remind them of the tax savings because that'll kind of make some of these other market-driven or investment-driven conversations a lot easier because you're showing that value. And your inbox will blow up with referrals, hopefully. Um, so the tech that I talked about today specifically inside a Holista plan, um, so I did show you there's a few things I do that are in our CRM system. There's a few things I do in Excel. Um, I look at kind of longer range in our financial planning tools, but really the, the in-depth analysis, really identifying those tripwires can really only be done um, inside of Holista plan. I haven't seen any of the other planning tools do that quite so well. Um, initial tax report. So when a client comes in, we help them understand their tax return, understand their taxes annually rerunning that tax report on the most recent return, seeing those tripwires, helping them understand their tax return, staging a tax letter to CPAs, and then running the scenario analysis. So those are the specific tools that I shared today. Um, so I want to make sure that I have time to go into all these great questions that you all have. Um, so me jumping into these. So can somebody ask, can you please walk through the language considering returns are always the year before and recommendations are based on the year to come? Great question. So um, when we're pulling those holistic plan scenario analysis and we're taking a look at the tax report, a lot of clients have very similar looking years. So you're able to help them understand kind of where they are based on last year. It's kind of a very easy way to share that information with them about where they are in the brackets. But also you can have that conversation with them about, yep, you made a little bit more this year. This is what it's gonna look like inside of those brackets. So there's not really a way to run that tax report in the current year, because it's really driven off of the return, the finalized kind of look at the year. Um, but it really does drive a lot of conversation. And if you know it's gonna be significantly different, you're gonna spend a lot more time in scenario analysis than you are in the tax report. 
Um, so it really just kind of depends on where your client is and, and what you're looking at. Um, but each of those are things that, that we look at. Um, what program do you use for your workflow? So we just use our, our CRM system. We happen to use Wealthbox. All of the CRM systems do that. So all the Redtail, Wealthbox, um, each of those different tools have a way to build out workflows. Um, you can even build out workflows within um, some of your different project management softwares, um, some financial planning softwares do it. The, the trick of it really is every single step that you're doing, think about defining that as a workflow step. I cannot tell you how much of a game changer that is to one, actually download your brain, go through the exact process you go through and write every single step down and then walk someone else through it. Every time you do that, you're going to add more workflow steps and you could have a crazy amount of workflow steps that are even like check and make sure your name is spelled right. Um, every single workflow step that'll allow you to produce a consistent experience for every single client. You won't forget things. So a lot of times if you don't work off of workflows, you're going to do a great job with your client. You're going to have a great meeting, but you're going to miss something. You're going to forget something like you're going to forget on our tax planning kind of checklist to look at um, different opportunities, like if they're in a community property state or separate property state and whether or not you should have all the money in a joint account or separate individual accounts. You're just not necessarily going to remember everything. And every single time I go into a holistic plan webinar, I literally have my workflow pulled up and I add something. So Debbie Taylor, Jeff Levine, whoever's speaking, I'm like, man, that's a really good extra thing to just check for and look for and identify. And if it's not an opportunity for that exact client, you just check it off. Um, and so that also then saves that you looked at all of those things. So you could put in your notes that you looked at a client's tax return, or you can put, put in your notes and say, hey, I looked at this form, this line. I looked to see if they're... Um, post-tax IRA contributions were on the 8606 tax form. You can specifically look at each of those different steps and then you're recording it in your CRM system. That you've done all this work. So you've quantified the, the amount of work that you've done for every single client. Um, yep, so I've got a couple questions about the workflow. We always do, people love workflows. Um, happy to share that. Um, I always get this question too. So what do we charge for the service for tax planning? For us specifically, this is included in our comprehensive planning that we provide. So we provide um, comprehensive financial planning and investment management to all of our clients. We, for most of our clients, work on an AUM basis. Um, we have some subscription clients, but in each case, our tax planning is baked into that. So that's just part of our service offering um, that we include. Um, that is something I have seen other advisors charge separately for, especially if you are preparing tax returns. Absolutely. Um, but the tax planning piece of it, I've just seen that as part of a, as a comprehensive relationship. Um, so somebody asked if I use the tax letter to summarize the information that you have and the taxable events that have occurred. Yes, this is exactly where we do that. So as we kind of work throughout the year, we're staging that tax letter. We're making sure um, that that's out there as well. Um, so the process for telling clients they need to adjust their um, plan contributions, do you send a mass email? Or are you actually calculating the amount to max out? Um, great question. So we are not fine tuning that for every single client. Um, if they're in a tax planning meeting, we will tell them, hey, you're, you look like you're going to contribute $20,000 this year. If you bump up your contribution level, let's get you to max out and put in 23. Um, so we'll do that for the year end. But when we are communicating the next year, um, that is on a more generalized basis. So we typically do a letter um, each year to our uh, kind of a mass email to all of our clients in the fall. And there's a couple things that we communicate within our practice. So one is here are some of the year end opportunities and our processing deadline for those. So we don't want to be processing all kinds of stuff on December 28th and worrying about whether it's going to hit that tax year. So we have some processing deadline cutoffs that we've established internally. So we're saying, hey, these are some potential opportunities that you might want to think about prior to year end. And this is generic. Um, these are some of the limits for next year. So make sure you are adjusting your contributions into each of your plan types. Um, we're informationally sharing that with them. And then we're offering our calendar as well to potentially talk. So there's gen more generically. So for the next year, we're not typically saying, hey, the limits went from 23 to 24,000. For you, this is this percentage of your pay. 
Um, I think that was more or less the question that was being asked. Um, but that is a service that you can absolutely choose to provide. Okay. Um, Okay, so this is a question about, do you go into the detail with an equity comp client to calculate quarterly estimated tax payments, or do you say this may be an issue and go talk to your CPA? Um, so I'm going to give you an example of this. So I have a client, I've, we have clients at NVIDIA, and so if you can imagine their RSUs are quite a bit more um, than they or maybe thought that they were going to be receiving as the stock price has grown. And so um, we've had clients who, um, have these big bonuses that are coming to them quarterly with their vestings and they're only doing that 22 percent withholding and maybe their total income for the year is pushing them into the 35 percent bracket um, so what we typically have done in these cases is we will run this out in scenario analysis and basically say okay this is kind of your baseline base income and bonus um, this is the additional rsu bonus income that's coming in and then withholding against that that 22 percent um, so we're taking a look at that and we're asking for some of that year to date information because they typically have that. Um, and then maybe forecasting if there's one more, um, we'll look at that as well. So in a recent scenario with a client, I ran all of that for them and said, yeah, you're going to still end up owing $60,000 this year, potentially. So that's maybe an estimated amount. And so what I did is I packaged that up and sent it over to the CPA. And I said, Hey, this is what I'm looking at. This is the data that was provided to me. This is what we ran for them. You know, can you make a recommendation from here? Can you advise from here? And so we're setting them up. And in that particular case, the CPA didn't charge the hourly rate because they said, yep, 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 yep. Looks good. 60,000. Yep. Um, at this point, it was before September 15th. So they advised an amount for September 15th and January 15th for estimated quarterlies to get those in. And, um, the client went ahead and did that. So they were not charged. So sometimes getting being a little bit more proactive, we saved them the surprise of having this big tax bill in April. Um, we also saved them money by not paying the CPA to do that level of analysis. We already ran it for them in that scenario analysis and just packaged it over. And then we let the CPA give the advice from there. Um, so we're very careful about our language um, as far as whether we're, we're going to give advice or if we're going to educate them on exactly what we've plugged in and what the scenario shows. So this is the projected amount, not the we advise you to do X, Y, and Z about it. Um, so I've got time for a few more questions here. So um, somebody asked about sharing the workflows. We always send an email out at the end. So you're gonna receive a recording of this presentation, slide deck, and we'll also send a couple of follow-up tools as well. So there's an additional piece that um, I'll jump ahead that Laura would probably mention is that Holistic Plan has a year-round tax planning calendar um, of potential things to look at. So a lot of things that are in multiple slides or that I talked about are condensed down into a one pager, which is beautiful. So if you are just starting to create a tax planning, a year-round tax planning process, for your clients, I would potentially utilize that handout, that year-round tax planning calendar that'll be potentially sent out. Um, I had a question for a report for lifetime tax savings. Um, the lifetime tax savings is something that I actually pull from our long-range financial planning calculator. So financial planning tools like um, Money Guide Pro, eMoney, Right Capital, all of those different tools typically will show the client year by year what they're potentially paying in taxes. And then if you turn on a technique like a Roth conversion, for example, you can then rerun it and then compare the total taxes paid. Um, so that's how I handle that. Um, I use Holista Plan for a lot more near term. So I'm looking at the analysis of the existing return, creating the tax letter, and then scenario analysis, typically a couple of years ahead. But when you want to zoom out even further, you're going to use one of those more longer range um, calculators to be able to maybe quantify some of that tax savings over a long period of time. But even being able to show somebody just on their tax report what those future Medicare IRMA brackets are and to be able to show them um, what those surcharges might look like for them in the future, you can probably pretty quickly come up with um, thousands of dollars of value add just by kind of explaining even just how that works. Most people have no idea how that works. So that's a big educational tool that you can use with your clients. Um, last question I'm gonna ask you is typical net worth of clients that you work with. 
Um, so we work with typically clients with a net worth of kind of one to five. We've got some clients on either end of that, but um, a lot of the clients that we work with are mid-career. So this is big opportunity zone. So clients who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, a lot of them work in tech. Um, and so they've got these opportunities of potentially just creating these little opportunities each and every year where maybe it's not always in every case, thousands of dollars of taxes saved in the current calendar year. But in a lot of cases, it's saying, let's let's have these strategies now that are going to save lifetime taxes and maybe create this more dream picture in retirement versus the nightmare of having all of this money that's not yet been taxed and then worrying about politics or what a politician is going to do with tax acts or codes or what we might potentially have happen in the future. So you can kind of alleviate some of that stress. Um, that's a very powerful thing that you can do for your clients. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you all today and talking about the big tax time bombs and tripwires and things. And I think once you get into and start running those reports for clients, if you don't already, you'll naturally see where a lot of those tripwires are and potentially how to educate your clients about what they are and how to potentially avoid them. Yeah, totally agree. Emily, absolutely outstanding. You, you crushed it on this presentation as you always do. So we're so happy to have you back. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. I Before we jump, I just wanted to mention that we do have a seven-day free trial if you have not yet tried Holistic Plan. It's, it's an incredible tool. Emily showed the tax report 2.0, which is brand new. We jumped into scenario analysis, and then we even talked about the Roth explainer tool in the chat. So if you're interested, please feel free to schedule a demo or do a seven-day free trial, and you can check it out for yourself. We also talked about tax planning as a year-round sport. So we will send out a really nice infographic that we have that really breaks down like what pieces of tax planning you should be doing in each section of the year. So we'll share that. And then we'll include the tax letter sample and then any of the deliverables that Emily mentioned. So thank you everybody for hopping on. Thank you, Emily, for your incredible educational content. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>